Hello, I'm Malcolm Cox, and it's another wonderful day here in ever-glorious Croxley Green, so we're outdoors. I hope the background noises aren't too distracting. It's what we're reading time, and what we're reading is Zeal Without Burnout. We're on to chapter five, which is called A Warning. Beware celebrity. Beware celebrity. You know, in John chapter five, verse 41, Jesus said, I do not accept glory from human beings. Jesus wasn't concerned about what people thought about him, and particularly for those of us on the staff of churches, it's so tempting to want to be liked and uh, respected when that shouldn't be our concern. Only what God requires of us and that we love other people matters, but uh, we've got to be careful about adopting or accepting that celebrity status that some church members sometimes wants to give those who lead them. And that can be a challenge. So what do we do? We've chosen a work that the world generally despises. We're not likely to get honored in this world, in this life for what we do. And therefore the temptation is to, is to look for it, even subconsciously, in our, in our church congregations. Yet we must avoid it if we're going to make it in the long haul because it's fine to have zeal, but if, it, if our zeal depends upon the feedback we get being positive, well, I don't think we're going to last. Jesus made it to the cross because he didn't care. He didn't care what the Pharisees thought. He didn't care what Herod thought or Pilate, even his own disciples. That wasn't what kept him going. It wasn't what fueled his zeal, and it, we must be careful that it's not what fuels our zeal and our work and our passion for what we do. Psalm 146 and verse 3. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. No, they can't. We need one another. We've talked about friendship in an earlier video, but friendship's different from that sort of uh, adulation that sometimes comes to those who are leading in some fashion or other. Perhaps a good way to deal with this, Christopher suggests in the book, is that we adopt the attitude of John the Baptist that we pray that Jesus will grow greater and we will grow less. Where is that? That's in John 3 and verse 30. That's what he said. He must become greater, I must become less. Could that be a prayer? A prayer that you offer. Say, God, help me become less so that Jesus can become more. I'm not suggesting it was easy to say. I'm not suggesting it's an easy attitude to carry with us all the time. I know I don't find it easy. I struggle so much with this because I want to be liked. I want to be loved, but I think I also really want to be liked. But this is a healthy prayer. Jesus become more, I become less. We follow a master who did not please himself, Romans 15. That's not what he was about. Let's make sure we're not about that. Instead, let's make sure that we are aware of the temptation to celebrity and defuse it by praying that Jesus become more. What do you do to deal with this kind of temptation? Uh, please email me, mccx at mac.com. Or you can leave a message anywhere you're here or see this recording. I'd love to know what you do. I'm sure others would. Let's help one another with this because it is a very real temptation, at least for some people. Until the next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. And God bless. <laughs>